What is happening? Episode 36 of Chat and Pony. Um, you just know how I always introduce it. The sponsor of the podcast, Flux. Want to thank my man and they've always got new grip coming out. Everyone was loving the caps in Glastonbury, so get on the caps, get on the website, get on their Instagram, give them a look. Nice one for sponsoring. But today I have got the big man in the building. Um, introduce yourself, Ad. Nice one, Pad. Uh, Nathan Gorman. Heavyweight, obviously. Uh, 20 fights, 19 wins. Current, well, former Just Central Area heavyweight champion. So to say, what's your current belt, lad? What's your uh, current belt? Well, current belt, IBF International heavyweight champion. Boom. Top 10 in the world, so... Just kicking ass, lad. Just kicking ass. It's absolutely <laughs> sick, lad. And um, got to start off with our like mutual connection. We've food. got it, like, well, food. Yeah, right away. I was going to say Paul Reed, but yeah, food. <laughs> Me and Nathan love our food. Like, I wish I was a heavyweight. You know. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's it's good until you get punched in the face. Then, <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're like, shit. Yeah. I wish it was a bit yeah, lighter yeah, than 100%, this. Yeah. And I always like mention Tom Aspinall, lad, because. Yeah. My last two fights, he's been at the show, obviously, he's yeah. been fighting. And lad, he's just walking around the day before we weigh in with a yeah, chocolate milk and that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm just looking. I just went, lad, go away. Yeah. Like at the last fight, I had me on the Thursday, we have our last grand about 12 o'clock in the day. Yeah. I'm eating my last grand and I just went to, as like Tom walked past, I was like, how are we, Tom? You're all right. And then just had my last grand there. He went, yeah. what? He's like, you're not eating now till you weigh in. I was like, nah, lad. He was like, you're messing. And you, like with him, that's just not right. You know what I mean? It's normal. I can remember my last fight in the hotel room. There's lads in there with a sweatsuit on training, you know, in the swimming pool area. Yeah. I mean, trying to lose eight, nine pounds. I was just drinking three or four liters of water on the day of my fight. Lad, you and heavyweights I, I, have I, I got it. That. Nice, you know. <laughs> lad, I swear you heavyweights have got it. So nice. Yeah, yeah. Like, I always say, I, w- I wish it was a heavyweight, but as you say, you get you're then getting the punched in the face by men that look like this yeah, fella. It's not nice. Absolute units that'll <laughs> take your chin clean off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, our, uh, our mutual friend, lad, Paul Reed. Yeah. Like, I've said it on this podcast plenty of times, lad. Without, without Paul Reed, I wouldn't be where I am now. Yeah, yeah, same here, mate. And right. truthfully, I never done lifted a weight until I got with Paul and the things he, he showed me and the way you strength. You're training harder, but not harder, if it makes sense. You, yeah. said, it, you said it to me before, yeah. didn't you? But you're so much fitter. Yeah, I like I don't know how it works out. But it, it's, it's crazy unreal. how it works, isn't it? Because like yeah. when we're doing sessions, like our heart rate's not going massively yeah. high, and we're not. But we're using pure strength. And lad, over the past two years, I've noticed my strength just, just go going through up, the yeah, roof. Yeah, and I'm like, I was doing circuits before this, thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. this is doing boss for me, boss for me fitness, yeah. boss for me cardio, and it just went. I was the same. I was doing like trying to do. 10 rounds of bar bag and things like as a heavyweight. Yeah. And I used to think, oh, I'd be fit as fire, but yeah. it, it, it's counterproductive. It yeah. wasn't happening for me, but got with Paul and he just literally he trained me like heavyweight, you know, lifting heavy weights. I think I got, when I got with Paul, I was lifting, deadlifting about 80 kilo, which from a man of my size. Yeah, it is mad. It's nothing. It's nothing, is it? And, and the same with that with upper body. When I first started training with Paul, I was struggling to lift the bar. Yeah, no, for a bench mad, press. I was yeah. like, yeah, like yeah, my hands were that I weak. I couldn't lift away hardly. It's crazy, it's you don't you actually don't yeah. realise like I, I won a world title at twenty one without doing any sort of standing condition. That's what I'm saying. And it, it's adding forty, fifty percent of your game and it's easy more, more. Easy adding that yeah, much yeah. to your game. Like I always say to people like people watch my uh, sessions and when he puts them up and they think, Oh, you're not yeah. doing much, are you? When lad, you notice you want, it when you end up sparring yeah. with you. Yeah, you exactly. know what I mean? When you yeah. end up sparring with someone, I, I always say to the lads in the gym now. Get with Paul Reed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> he is the man, lad. Yeah, without yeah. without him, I really don't know what my body would look like now. Like, yeah, I literally, yeah, yeah. I wake up and look in the mirror and go, where's this muscle come from? What What's this here? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm looking, I was like, what, wow, are they traps? Like, how have I got them? You know what I mean? I'm yet to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just woke up one morning and was like, wow, where's this muscle come from? It's mad. And it's literally yeah. where he's just pushed us and pushed us and... As you know, everything's scientific, isn't it? Everything, everything's monitored. Well, Everything. you, you know as well as I do. Yeah. Every every little rep, every little set is all monitored. Did you uh, did you have a DEXA scan going into your last fight? No, I had uh, you know the machine at the yeah uh, yeah. So I, I used on, that the other day I'm myself. Uh, I'll be back on that next week. Yeah, <laughs> have you not had one since your fight? No. <laughs> <laughs> Put a bad three stone on. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I've got a DEXA tomorrow, lad. I've got a DEXA oh, nice. tomorrow morning. See what it's saying. But um, yeah, as I say. 
without that man, lad, I don't know where I'd yeah, be 100%, now. 100%. He's an absolute bro. legend. So big shout out to Paul Reed. Yeah, big shout out to Paul Reed, the main man. But um, so how did you get into boxing, lad? I always go back to the start. Yeah, well, we'll get to the start. Uh, my first memories of it, Pad, when me about four or five year old, my granddad bought me. You remember them little step on boxing things we used to punch and he used to yeah, come back. Yeah, and it come you. back and you'd have to like yeah, slip yeah. and that. Well, I got one of them about four or five year old because I was football mad. All my life, like a little boy, I was football mad. I used to have 100, 150 footballs. I was just simple over football mad. <laughs> yeah. um, until he bought me this boxing set, I just fell in love with it. You know, every five minutes of the day, I was punching it. I wouldn't stop punching it. Nice, that. I was watching like the Rocky films and I proper got... I was sold into it. Yeah, but your granddad's yeah, like that now. Yeah, I, that was yeah, the best buy ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I got about eight, nine year old, you know, when you get a bit older. And yeah. I said to him, I want to go to the boxing gym. And he said, no, he said, I'm not going to take you. He didn't want me to do it at all. Which, being a father now, I can understand. Yeah, you can understand it. I won't want my son to be in a boxing ring. I can understand that. <clears> yeah, definitely. And I was a, you know, little fat lad. About <laughs> six, 60, 70 kilo, you know, 10. I, I had my first fight at 10 year old. 11 year old, I was 64 kilos. Yeah. There was, about, there was three of us in the country. Lad, I, I, was, bo- I boxed the three. <laughs> that I was, was it. I was still fighting at 61 kilo up until I was like 20, 19, 20. <laughs> Honest to God, 11 years of age, my first amateur fight, I was 64 kilo. And there was three of us. That dude was a big kid, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Even back then, you know, I was destined to be a fat Yeah, fat you, 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 No, you're destined to be a big machine. Yeah. Lad, that's what you're destined um, to be. Yeah, so my cousin took me to the gym, unbeknownst to me dad. Yeah. Um, I was about nine, something like that. No, about eight. And I can remember walking through the gym door. You know, it is that smell. It's yeah, straight away. That, that horrible, that sweaty sweat smell. Blood smell. <laughs> and I can remember yeah, the, the chains rattling on the bag, you know, with the big, big yeah. lines of punching on it. And I thought, oh, this is unreal. The music's, music's blowing. People are sparring in the gym. I just instantly fell in love with it. And um, I remember going back home telling my dad, I said, where have you been? He said, where have you been, son? Because obviously I was like coming sweaty. Yeah. Then. So I said, I've been to the boxing gym and he went mad. And then, like, my mum, like, spoke to him, said, you know, he wants to do it, let him do it. So he'll, he'll give it up with him. I was about to say, bet he fought hard. He'll, he'll, he'll you know, phase out he, of it. He loves chocolate too much. He'll, <laughs> he'll give it up four or five months, he'll be over with. And, yeah, he said, yeah, go on. He said, I'll, I'll take you to the gym. That was twen- uh, coming up 18 years ago. So, and here we are today. It's mad, isn't it? It is. It's and crazy. He's, he's, he's always said, he said, I'll be with you and I'll support you every step of the way. But when the day comes, you want to retire? He said, no one's forcing you know if you said i'd be i'd be much more happier man yeah if you retire to be fair like, which he's a bag of nerves you know when i fight he's which I'll, i can understand it i know what you're like i'll be honest i'm not a dad yet so i don't really understand yeah, as man, much you yeah, know what i mean yeah. but lad i know what you mean just because of my dad yeah well, my dad same lad, my dad has been to every one of my fights apart from like two because of covid three yeah, yeah same I mean? here same been here. to every single one yeah and the first ever fight he watched actually watched was my last fight yeah, yeah. he's never actually sat there and watched me yeah, fight because yeah, yeah. his heart is racing that much and he's that scared something's going to happen to me mad, don't it, that's, that's what I mean thing. like because of all the other venues we've been at lad, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you could just walk out into the yeah, foyer and grab 100%. a you know what they like you want, grab a pint yeah, yeah exactly but he Can't couldn't get out of the seat in the O2 he couldn't get out the seat where yeah, everyone yeah, was yeah, squashed yeah, in yeah, so yeah. he said to, to, to my uncle who's his twin oh, sh- should we just watch it yeah. and like he said I sat there and watched it and he was like you don't understand what it's like for me, so yeah, it's <laughs> I bet your dad says the he's same. The exact same. He, oh man, it's got to be horrible for a minute. You know it has. I mean? He said to me, "It's not like you're going to play cricket or anything. Sensible sport." <laughs> he said, "You got some seventeen and a half stone man in the other corner who wants to punch your head right in for you." <laughs> it's not like going to play golf, is no, it? Exactly. Or tennis? No, no. So, <laughs> what I mean? So I can understand it to be fair. Like even though me and you don't see it that way. Because I don't when I no, get in I the case. It's just a job to Yeah, it's just a job. I get in there and do oh, what I mean, I you get do. in there yeah. and do what you got to yeah, yeah. do. Other people from the outside are like, oh, you could die. Yeah, that's you know the, what that's I mean? The thing. That's the I think, thing. I don't think about that. I don't. But that's, that's I always think that how many people a day die in a car crash. Exactly. So you, you can't know, you can walk you? out of the street there yeah. and something could hit you on top of the head. I know like, it's only to one odd, but it can happen to you. What's that? Like, you're more likely to die in a car crash going to put the lottery on than you actually are to win the lottery yeah that is go. just the maddest that, that's, one ever it's true though isn't it <laughs> it is true it's very true yeah yeah so yeah i can understand it to be fair being a father it's madness isn't it? so how many kids have you got now i got two and one on the way yeah, yeah i was married actually believe it or not that's my anniversary today so <laughs> don't lie is it <laughs> yeah. happy anniversary it's a bell to that <laughs> my anniversary today six years today i was married i got married at 20 young um yeah Two, two, two kids now, one on the way. One's so, to be lad, don't tell me you're a year younger than me. 
Yeah. I'm 27. I was 26 two days ago. I was. Oh, what? If I was three a man this big, younger than me, <laughs> lad, you had an absolute unit, lad. That was I born before you. I'm mad at it. It's fucking crazy, lad. Like proper crazy. But yeah, was she happy that you've come down to do yeah, this? Yeah, she's not bothered. Yeah, she's, you're gonna go for the scram yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna take her out things later. She's not really bothered. She's not that type of woman. Yeah, you know, enough. She she knows like she's very supportive of me boxing yeah. and things like that. So that's half the battle in it. Because if you was going yeah. back home to a, a nagging woman, a nagging wife, you're spot on there. Yeah, it's drains your batteries, doesn't it? You've got it. Uh, needs, you need support. You need support, support people. Exactly. Like, I'm lucky in that end of myself. I've got a bit of support. What I do? Uh, it's half the battle, brother. It is. But are you gonna be the same like your dad? To yeah. your kids? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully my lad doesn't box. <laughs> is he a big lump like you, though? Well, he's he's five and he's six stone already. Yeah. He's a, he's a big he's lad. He's a big kid. He's, a bi he's in, like nine-year-old clothes, so he's a big lad. <laughs> he's definitely going to go to yeah, in a year a or two. Lad. Dad, yeah. can I come down the gym? <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be like, eh, 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 should I do what my dad done? Should I, yeah, should yeah. I? Yeah, yeah, they'll be gone. Yeah, it's definitely in it. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait to have kids, dad. I think it'll drive me on more in my career yeah yeah you know it what does. I mean? because you've got something to that's why i do it for exactly like back when i was you know a single lad i used to think oh, i'll just do it for myself but when you get kids you got you got them to provide yeah. for you got to set their future up i come from a very working class home so everything i'm trying to do you know is trying to do something for their future yeah that's the idea anyway and that's what that's what gives you i think that burning desire yeah to you try want, and do your best for your kids you want to work hard enough so they don't have to work as hard exactly. as you've ever worked exactly exactly well, as I say, I, I'm not ready for kids, me lad. You're a brave man. Gonna <laughs> have three by the time you're 27. Exactly. You are a no brave man. No wonder I'm bald man. already, it? <laughs> no wonder I'm bald already. <laughs> so, I, I, did you go through the amateurs? Yeah, yeah. I went through the, I had my first amateur fight at 11 years of age. Like, like I said, back then there was only three of us in the country and I boxed the three of them uh, and I beat them. Then I had to wait till I was about 15 till I got about yeah yeah that long. i was 91 kilo then yeah 15 at 15 you was 91 God, kilo I was, I, was a, I was a heavyweight yeah that, that's the heaviest 15. that i get to now yeah 15 i was a heavyweight wow then um i won the abas national national championships yeah. i won the free nations um this is all within like six seven fights I yeah won all this all these fellas i was boxing was way more experienced than me i won the abas the fellow i box I had like 15 or 16 amateur fights and I stopped him in two rounds. He was a, the last year reigning champion and I got in there and it was meant to have been like an easy, easy night's work for him. For him. And I stopped, I stopped him in two rounds. Then I won the three nations. So I come the champion of Great Britain. Then I uh, come a semi-finalist and I went for the first tournament for GB. I represented Great Britain. Um, my first tournament was in the world championships and I got to the semi-finals, which is you know yeah for your first ever tournament, first ever tournament i was new to it you know like weighing in the mornings and all like the preliminary rounds and all the different different carry on i didn't know i was just used to weighing and fighting that was it go home yeah so being over a brook first time away and all my family first time on a plane as well was that the first time first time, time, first time, the time, first time yeah, that must have been nerve that, yeah lad. by myself as well i went on the plane i was more scared i swear to god i was more scared of the plane than i was fighting i remember jumping <laughs> on I, I had to fly from manchester to london and all the coach saying, you all right, Nate? I was like, pale. I was like, I, I didn't want to say to it because I knew the lads were yeah. piss out of me. I didn't want to say it was my first time flying. I was, I was fucking sucked in the middle thing. I was like, <laughs> holding on to it. I swear to God, I was holding on to it. And I was thinking, if this fucking crashes. <laughs> <laughs> and then out the blue, the England coach said to me, he went, oh, Nate, you know, if it crashes, you're actually sucked in the best, best seat. And I thought, why the fuck would he say that to me? I went, why is that? His name was Matt. I said, why is that, Matt? And he said, because you're, cause you're over, you're, you're parallel with the wings. It's the best place to be sort of it if, if a crash happens. And I thought he just sunk my head proper, proper off. I was thinking, I was thinking all sorts. I was only flying from Manchester <laughs> to London. I was up in the I air. Know, for, that's about a 15, 20 yeah, minute flight. It was it? longer taking off than it was up in the air. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> why would you say that to someone though if they're actually exactly. scared and about and I to was, fly? Honestly, I was fucking sucked there. But didn't like, move. why would he say that to you? Like I, I would have used the one I, I used to like went no because of COVID obviously and we never flew for yeah, a bit. Yeah. When we first got back on a plane, my missus was like, oh, "It's like shitting herself." I, I was like, "I'm all right with it now, but I don't. I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan, but I'm all right with it." <laughs> See, I'm, I've always been a fan with planes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I always use that one. It's the safest form of travel. It is. They it actually, literally is. The pilot actually said to me, he said, you're safer up here than you are down there. It's yeah. the safest form of travel. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't mind flying. I just hate long haul flights now. Yeah. Lad, that, I love San Diego. It's, not, it's the best place in yeah, the world, lad. Unreal. But lad, that, that 11 hour flight ruined is you. an absolute killer. Yeah, yeah. And I just can't sleep on flights no more. It ruins you. <sighs> yeah, Absolutely. It does, yeah. Like, 
The jet lag when you come home is the worst as well. Yeah, yeah. You're just up all night, lad. Are you? Yeah, it's too much, isn't it? Well, after that World Championship, so I come like, did you ever like join G- Team yeah, GB? Yeah, yeah. So and, like, I got. Did I, you I think won, about the Olympics? Yeah. Or anything? I won the. Um, I won the. I got to the semi-finals in the World Youths, and obviously you get trials then for GB. So I can remember going, walk, going into Sheffield, big massive setup. The, obviously, the Olympic Center. Seventeen years of age, so I was you know very proud of myself. Yeah. Um, I walked into the, the center, and the first person I saw was Anthony Joshua in the ring, shadow boxing. And obviously, in back in, in my mind, I was thinking, "This is my like this is where I got to be." Yeah. Type of thing. And at the time, there was Anthony Joshua, there was Joe Joyce, Fraser Clark, all these lads was like people I looked up to. And I can remember walking in the gym in the the Sheffield Wall, and they got all like the Olympic champions, like pictures of the Olympic champions and the the medalists all around the the wall. And there's so many, so much talent up there. Just to even get offered up there, I was, you know, overwhelmed. And I can remember going up there and I'd done really well. I sparred them all, I sparred Joshua, I sparred the Joyce, Fraser Clark. I was only 17 years of age. I shit at running, mind. Because <laughs> he used to get me up, he used to get me up like at seven o'clock in the morning to run. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> like, he used to ruin me. <laughs> you're the, you're the way to think you're dreading more, you're was dreading the, the run more than sparring Joshua. Million percent, Joshua and million Joshua. percent. Every time I'd rather, I would rather spar than run yeah. every day of the week. <laughs> Every day of the week. And I think the trials lasted about three or four months. And then I got the letter through saying, congratulations, we put you to be a member of the, the Great Britain squad. I was very, you know, happy with it. And then I'd done a tournament with them. I went to a Felix Stan tournament, won a bronze medal. I boxed like the top three in the world and I won a bronze. So bear in mind, the, I've still under 10 fights, amateur fights. I was just about to say, you're still under 18 at this yeah, point yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, still under 18 and still under 10 fights. You know, every time when people ask me, are my fights, you had 50 or 60, I say, no, I've had 10. They go, ah, fuck off, you're lying. Yeah. But the truth, because I was so big growing up, yeah. I couldn't get a fight. So I had to take fights with people who was more experienced than me just to get a fight, win, lose, or draw. But I ended up finished off with an amateur record of 13 fights, 12 wins. Being on a member of GB, winning the ABAs, three nations, and obviously I turned professional at the age of 18, which looking back now probably was a bit young, but it was hands-on experience. So what, what year did you go pro in? I went pro 2015. 15. So wouldn't you have chilled and waited for the Olympics the next year? That's no? the thing. That's the thing. I, looking back at it, I didn't want to. I wanted to be professional. You know, I wanted my ambition. Being on the G, my ambition as an amateur was to get in the Great Britain squad. Yeah. And for me, I'd done that. You know, win the ABA to get in the Great Britain squad and I'd done that. So after that, I just wanted to be a professional because I saw, I saw like people on there was 30, 31, 32 without turning professional. And I yeah. thought, That's I don't bad. want that to be I me. I don't want that to be me, you know, because you could get to one cycle, you know, you, you know, it's me. you get to one cycle, someone else could walk through the gym door. He's automatically yeah. the favorite, isn't he? He right could go there. before you. Then you go wait another four years. Yeah. Then before you look around, there's eight years out of your career. Well, that happened to one of my mates, Peter McGrail. I went to the World Championships with Peter. That's what I mean. Very, very talented fighter. Very talented, but he was meant to go to the Olympics before, weren't he? Yeah, yeah. And he picked someone else to go in before him. That's what I'm saying. So he go. had to go, so he had why, to, why? from 2016, he had to wait five years to 21. That's what I'm saying, man. It's, far, it's a I'm long saying. time. a long time. He could have been a world champion. He could have. Could be a, like the one, the kid who beat him, what was his name? Something, Shaquille Stevenson or something. Oh, Shakur. Shakur, Shakur yeah, Stevenson. Yeah, yeah. He beat him in the amateurs years well, ago. He's a world champion we, yeah, now, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, exactly. We was in the... And Peter's, Peter's like, what, 3-0? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy, it's madness. lad. We was in the World Championships 2014 in Sofia, Bulgaria. And Peter McGrail boxed at 56 kilo, I think. Yeah, it was. And Shakur... Peter won bronze in the Worlds. And Shakur won the gold at 52 kilo. So it was like the weight yeah. below Peter. And obviously, a couple of years later, they was both the same weight and they fought each other. Was it the Olympics or something? I can't remember. No, it wasn't the Olympics. It was Where like a World Championships or something. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a World Championships. In Dubai or something? I, he, I can't remember. Because Shakur won on points, didn't he? I can remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Shakur won on points. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that ended up, I think Peter won another bronze medal in that tournament because that was yeah, the yeah. semis. Yeah, yeah. When he, when yeah, he got yeah. beat by Shakur. Yeah, yeah. But like he's one of the best pros about now, isn't he? And, like, in the top literally. pound for pound, isn't he? Literally. Did he, I think he won golden 16, didn't he? Yeah. He did, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, he won the Youth World Championships, I think, twice. I think, or once he won the Youth Olympics, and obviously, and then that, uh, yeah, that's just, that, yeah. As an amateur, mate, that's that's you can't you, know, get you, don't, you don't hear of it because you, don't, you know you. the robberies and yeah, it's unbelievable to do that. The way you have done what you said, though, I respect that. Yeah, you just set out to be on Team GB. You never set out to be like that's what Peter. I've spoke to Peter about. I've had Peter on here. Yeah, yeah. Peter wanted to be in the Olympics. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. 
And then I just ate it. I watched this fight, lad, and he just he was fighting a Thai way, and he was about 38. He'd been to oh, about man. four Olympic exactly, games, exactly, and he just outpointed them. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah, what's going on here? I know, I know, you know what I mean? It's unbelievable. And it was the first round, and because he'd done so well in other tournaments, he should have got a buy, and he never. You know what I mean? It's just in yeah, that boxing, like the amount of politics what it involved ridiculous. is ruthless. Because you could get the wrong end of the draw, and the person like the favorite could be boxing not opponents, but you know people watch. Yeah, they're gonna beat and end up straight to the panel. And you could box. Yeah, you could be the second seed. You could box all like the the Kazakhstanians. Yeah, the, the Russians and that the, the ones that are gonna give bastards. you that. <laughs> you know, them ones will yeah, kill you. the ones that'll just get it and just get up like the Terminator yeah, and look like and just go, let's as, do this. Yeah, exactly <laughs> them. And that, that 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 takes it out of you, yeah. Because so, you're fighting virtually every day, and you fight them, and you're in, you know, you're in the fight of your life, and you got to fight someone else again, like them. The That's what I mean. After. And every, you're ruined. Every fight is the fight of your life. Yeah. yeah. Every fight you, lose. you can't lose the yeah. next day, yeah. it's a, and then yeah. it comes down and to plus they got to make the weight as well. That's you have a to fight. make weight every day. Yeah, because they get weighed in every day. <laughs> so I can remember when I was <laughs> I at the world, that. and I was sharing a, sharing a room. Uh, Muhammad Ali was called. Lad was, yeah. He was called Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, honestly. 52 he, won sil- he won silver. I know another Muhammad Ali, to be honest. Yeah, he's from Manchester. He, w- he won silver in the, in the world, 52 kilo. And I can remember he would like, after he weighed in, he'd go straight to the cake, eat some cake. Like, just, I know, mad. Eat a bit of cake, eat a bit of food. Then he'd go box. Then the night after, the night the night before the fight, he'd just sit in the hot bath. And then, like, make weight. Yeah. Virtually every day, every two days. He'd wake up super early before he's weighing, have his hot bath, weigh in. No, why he sounds like he had it down though. To be fair, he'd always like fluctuate a kilo, kilo yeah. and a half, so he could just hot bath it, and he was sound. Well, that is sound because like yeah. I do like five kilo overnight. That's what you do, you yeah. It's mad, damn it. I've done lad my big cuts when I, you've probably seen the video when I'm sick in the cage. Lad, I'm getting interviewed in my post fight interview, and you know what I'm like, lad. I'm not a one word answer kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, 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 lad. I was just like he was giving me the mic, and I was going, yeah, yeah, it was sound. Give me a get lad. I kept giving like, I could just feel it coming up, lad, like the acid reflux, and I had to just go and just spewed in the in the cage, oh, lad. Man, yeah. But the night before, well, the twenty four hours leading up to it, I cut eight point three kilo. Jesus Christ! Overnight. Man. How the fuck did you do that? Oh, lad, it was rough. Like that fight, I woke up. It's wonder you didn't feel like killing yourself. Oh, I did. I woke up set on the Monday morning. I was fighting. I was weighing in on a Friday. I woke up seventy seven point eight kilo. And was fighting at sixty five point eight. Jeez, man, lad, so, it was. So you really lost two stone, nearly. Yeah, like twelve kilo. It was Monday to Friday, Jesus. but I done like four of it. I done like three and a half of it, water loading and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had to just, I had to do the drain, rest drain in the bath, lad. The worst one about that that wake us as well, lad. The night when I was trying to go to sleep, I had the earache. Oh, like I never got a wink of sleep. I had to just keep getting in a bath. Oh, I had the earache. <laughs> <laughs> and then as an idiot like everyone thought that I spewed up blood lad when I, when I look back at it it does look like blood but this is just how stupid of a child I was yeah. on the way to the venue I had a hot chocolate and Ferrero Rocher oh so that's what coming back up that's what I come back up it was like brown but some people like from the camera angle it did look, look like a bit blood. red you know what I mean yeah. so people still tweet me and that to this day shut up you you put blood in the cage <laughs> and I'm just like wasn't blood you know boss <laughs> it just wasn't blood <laughs> lad I'm mad I swear some people on the internet are mad oh um, we, you, lad, we, we was on about this up, coming up in the car the oh, the tweets lad I, listen I, can, I get some sticks so god knows what you get lad that's what I mean I had one yesterday what was it and he was a fan he followed me and like he put something back I put a can't can't get my Xbox on here. I need to update COD or something where it was updating yeah, it. Yeah. And he put back to me, get off fucking video games and get back in the gym. It's like I've fucking trained for four hours today, yeah, you I'm, stupid I'm swat. Chilling you know now, what I mean? Yeah. I'm chilling. What? And then everyone starts giving him grief. He's like, oh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. If you was a fan, you wouldn't be. You you what, what are you yeah, on exactly. about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, lad. <laughs> <sighs> if he was a fan, lad, he wouldn't be saying that, would he? No, you probably not. get it yourself now, oh, lad. It's, it's, it's proper idiots, lad. Oh, I get that much stick. It's unreal. How can you be a fighter? You're too fat. You can't last the distance. You can't do this. You can't do that. I've like I've even texted them back because some some I ignore. Yeah, the odd one. I'll be honest on Instagram now. Yeah, I've I just know, got to ignore yeah, them. Yeah, that's the thing. And I, the odd one, I thought, you know. I'll, Tweet you back. I say, come train with me. I tell you what, here's me address. Come spare me. See what it's like. No one ever comes. No. 
I do it all but the time. The thing is, social media is a good thing, but I think it's also exactly. I think it's, it's a very bad thing because everyone's got a voice. Exactly, that's what I say. Like, Every, I think, everyone's got a voice, and the, the, they always want to point the finger. I think with social media now, you should have to register an identification. I, I agree. I agree. And then you wouldn't have racism, no, homophobia, no, people getting abused, 100%. kids getting bullied. Yeah, you wouldn't have all that. Stop. Yeah, yeah it all stop. That's all stop. Because all that's the people on them fake accounts, lad. Like that's what so. They do. Some of the stuff I get, lad, it just annoys me. But like yeah. other stuff, I can't. Like Twitter's not so bad, is it? Yeah. You can actually it, well, it, it, say, yeah. I call yeah. someone a stupid yeah. on Twitter. You know what I mean? But, uh, well, you've been shut yeah, down. Oh, yeah, lad, on, on Twitter, though, but like I had one Twitter account for like 12 years, lad. And then it got took off me. And it was for calling someone. They said something to me, something about my opinions, and said something. I went, lad, who are you talking to, you stupid, fat, ugly? And my account got took for that. That's what I got took for. You know what I mean? But, I was fuming. But, but he was calling you. But he was calling me all sorts. Yeah. It, lad, it makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, I look at me from like, my phone and just go, yeah. this makes no sense at all. I know, it's you know mad. What I mean? it? like, it's mad. The measure requests and all. Uh... <sighs> lad, that's, I can't even go through my requests anymore. I, I so anyone who messages me, I'm sorry. I used to get back to everyone, but I'm sorry I can't get back to every message. I used to message people back constantly. And then, lad, your inbox is just absolutely yeah, shocker. Good. Like, yeah, after, yeah. A, like, I remember I used to message everyone back on my requests. And after my debut, lad, yeah, oh, my God, lad, my inbox, well, yeah. I was looking at my phone, like, how am I meant to respond to all these messages? Yeah, four, That's the only yeah. good thing about having a new account, even though, lad, it's, it's getting, I'm getting sick of it now. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on my third Insta, like. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, as I said, I can't, I just don't respond to no one now. yeah, yeah. It's easier, isn't it? It's easier. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the other day, I, like, I think you can't even say to someone, like, oh, come down the gym and spar with the guys who were at £125. I said that to someone and it got reported. That's, just, that's what I'm saying. But, like, but, saying? It, but saying it never even got reported. Like, I put it up and 10 seconds later, it just come up. This is this, this is this goes against our guidelines. This, yeah. this goes against our guidelines. I'm like, what goes against your guidelines? <laughs> Saying, will this fella come and spar someone who's under twenty five pound? Exactly. If you want to find out what it's about, jump in there. Exactly. With him, see what, but see none like. of them ever do. Lad, I had the UFC nah. get on me the other week saying, "If you put your address on Twitter, it's like no. Why? They were like, you've put an address on Twitter. I'm like, yeah, that's the gym. I'm telling any troll that wants it to get down, and I'll put it on you on me vlogs. <laughs> Did anyone share? Sh show no. <laughs> No, lad, I had one messaging me, messaging me saying, um, it was over the Tommy Coyle thing, lad, did you see the Tommy Coyle <laughs> thing? Lad, you should have seen how much stick I got over that. Right. I didn't know nothing had happened to his dad, lad. Oh, you must have tweeted, all oh, right. And I quote tweeted something that he'd put up like five days earlier. He put something up about the Queen, lad, licking the Queen's ass. Yeah. So I just said, oh, what a tool he is. Yeah. He's a, he loves the Queen, the flag yeah. shagger, you know what I mean? <laughs> Lad, you wanted to see the hate I started getting. Like, you knew his dad was dead. Why are you saying? And I'm like, you didn't. how am I meant to know? Yeah, yeah. Someone, like, should I type someone's name in yeah, on yeah. Google to make sure nothing's wrong with them before they yeah, say exactly. something? You didn't know. Like, it had nothing well, to do with his dad. If you didn't know, you didn't know. Exactly. It had nothing to do with his dad, yeah. lad. Yeah. But people, lad, especially me, people love just jumping on, lad, and just giving me hell. Yeah. <laughs> lad, anything. <laughs> just give me hell, lad. It's mad, isn't it? Like the, but you're going to get it even more, lad, and even more, like the bigger you get, lad. Yeah, the, That's definitely. what they do, and it's going to happen with you because you're yeah. going to end up being heavyweight champion of the world, lad, yeah, and it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So you just, so you've just got to get used to it. Oh, it's hard work. <laughs> but yeah. Open up three or four more accounts, will I? Yeah, lad, that's what paddy. I mean. That's one thing I've never done. I've never, like, opened, like, a troll account or nothing. You know what I mean? Ever why in my you? life. Yeah, why would, why you? would you? I think if you open one of them, you are a sad little mushroom. A million percent. You're just sitting in your mean? room and you're just tweeting people, yeah, Instagram like, people. Oh, lad, when I get I, them. To be fair, have you got time to do that? Because I have. No, I haven't. No, what the one thing I haven't got time to do? Make all mad emails. Yeah. Lad, yeah. I've got one email address. Yeah, same here. And I've had it since I was 16. Yeah, and I've had that email since I was like 13. And I still got all it. stupid emails because I've had it for that long yeah, and I've signed up to all stupid yeah, shit. I'm the same, 100%. Oh, it's hard work. <laughs> you just get me like, I'm getting emails off the UFC and then it comes up. Trip, uh, trip advisor and I'm just like go away I've got important emails to look at have you ever swiped you know you delete your emails yeah and you're going through them you delete them you end up deleting the one what you don't want to delete yeah. oh, like, that's when you're like undo undo oh, undo, yeah, undo nothing worse is quick. nothing worse oh technology lad I'm terrible with it oh, damn I'm terrible that. with technology me yeah I am I don't know what I'm doing but we're 90s babies, lad. All these millennium exactly. kids exactly. know what to do, and yeah. don't they? Yeah. Madness, someone born in 2000 is 22 now. 
lad, I still think did too you far see that them. tweet yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, thing yeah. Like, Adam showed me that today he went get on that and I just went oh, that's mad because yeah. like Fran and Ben in the gym are both like 21, 22 they were born 2000, 2001 and for me it's just like feels like 10 years ago yeah, yeah. it's mad I know it's mad isn't it oh, little burp there sorry the firm <laughs> I just swear, I put that my new new vlog what's come out as well. I looked yesterday, and lad, someone on Twitter has just took the bits out where they're burping and farting. Um, and lad, the amount of people chatting shit about me. Can't you burp and fart no more? <laughs> it's like saying, oh, he's disgusting. Why? Why can't I burp and fart? It's a normal human thing to do. You can't help it. Can I just swear, I, it, oh, lad, <laughs> I can't do nothing no more, you know. People are jumping on People are just they? jumping on me and giving me a hard yeah. time. But, um, we spoke before about obviously your amateur career. You went pro at 18. Yeah, yeah. Went professional 18. 2015 it was. I turned over November, I think November 25th, something like that. 2015. I had my debut the 5th of December. So literally. Yeah, nice. But I was in camp anyway. So yeah, you were training I'm, for it. Let's be fair, I, was, I boxed someone 14 and a half stone who lost 60 fights. So I knew, yeah. you know, I knew. But that's just the way it is in boxing. The, the thing is, it's, he's a professional man. And people don't look at it like this way. People think, oh, he's had 60, but he's lost 50. Yeah, I've had zero experience as a professional. Yeah. That fella's had 60 professional fights. He's been cut. He's been dropped. You know, he's beat other people. He knows the the, the whole game, doesn't he? Yeah. So me getting in that ring, yeah, he's a journeyman, but they do little things. As well as you know, Pat, they do little things like they'll headbutt you. They'll, yeah. They'll elbow you you know cut your eye and hit you low and you think this is not i'm not used to this because obviously amateur you can't do nothing because yeah. you do the least little thing will break you know point off do it again you're disqualified as a professional little things can slip in you know what i mean little on the blind side of the referee it's happened to me like journeyman they've headbutted me you know they've hit me low hit me in the kidneys at you behind the back of the head and you learn all this with, got, experience. with experience so yeah my debut um 5th of december it was in warsaw town hall um nervous you know, <laughs> obviously i was like only 18 years of age I remember getting to the getting to the venue because i like getting to the venue and looking at the ring and soaking it all up yeah um get that adrenaline you know that that feeling the you, little you, you, you know you know, you know, yeah. you know it's that feeling in your stomach like oh yeah fight time now i can remember like weighing in with him and he was the, <laughs> that was the difference <laughs> i just thought oh, i'm gonna smash you to pieces <laughs> and i ended up stopping him in free but I was I was under uh, instructions. Just go out there, enjoy yourself. Like, yeah. you know, you could. I could have walked, run in there the first round. You um, could, yeah. I could. I could have had anything could happen. Cut eye. You know, then you've lost your debut. Then, then what happens to you? You're ruined, isn't you? So I just took me time and I got the stoppage. Then I had a fight again in I think February. I was very busy. I had like six, seven fights in the first year. Picked up my first title. Uh, won the central area title. Makes you like champion of you. Like half of in like your region type that of thing. So many belts in boxing, though, unbelievable, isn't there? unbelievable. Like that has my head shocking. The, the, uh, truthfully, I reckon there's about fifty, maybe more for each weight. Y yeah, maybe more. Like it's ridiculous. It's all just... world ranking belts, maybe. Yeah, because you, yeah, the main ones wanna... are the WBO, WBC, WBA, IBF. Yeah, 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 they're the main yeah, yeah. ones. They're the main. They're the main belts. So if you get like an international or continental one of them, or a European or something like that, that gets you in the world ranking, and you can. Yeah. If you're in the top five in the world and say Anthony Joshua and Usex fighting for the, all the titles, that's what they've got all the titles, apart from obviously the main one, the, the main the main man. And someone's injured, one of them one of them they can't pull that fight. They gotta go down that ranking. And ask each one in and the ranking. Each rankings. one of you if you want to yeah. fight. Who's gonna say no to that? If you're fit and ready, you know what yeah, I mean? You're not you're gonna, gonna, gonna say do no, it yeah. you, chance of a lifetime. Um so yeah, there's there's a lot of belts in boxing. Like years and years ago, there was only four and that was your lot. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why it's just like it's so like condensed now, isn't it? And, like, yeah, yeah. Just, oh, it's boxing's crazy. That's one thing. I think that's why a lot of like fight fans are going over to MMA just because in yeah, the yeah. UFC, yeah, there's definitely. one belt. You know what I mean? There's one belt. Is there? Yeah, one belt. That's all oh, that that's matters. Lot. Every weight. Do you reckon one they champion. will? Do you reckon they will in time? Have make, more? Make, yeah. No, they won't have more. You reckon not? It's because with the UFC, like with the way boxing has the boards. Yeah. yeah. The UFC is just its own organization, isn't it? And they have Bellator as a world title, PFL as like a million dollar tournament, one as a world title, Cage Warriors as a world title. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's like its own company type. Yeah, but the UFC is just recognised as the the best. The best. You yeah. know what I mean? Once you become like a UFC champion, you are the best in your weight of the world. 
Simple as that. There's on, there's only one belt, and I think it just it just makes it easier for the fans as well as the fighters. You're a world champion, aren't you? Exactly, yeah, you're a world, exactly. champion. world champion. Like it's mad how many different people can be a world champion at one weight in boxing. Well, there's WBA regular, and there's WBA super champion. So there's two WBC, WBC silver world champions. So there's four. Four th- th- already. Just off two. WBO, <laughs> IBF, and I think there's a WBO like another world title. Yeah. So there's like six, probably eight or nine world title belts. That's IBO, crazy. IBO. And what was in the, the Ring magazine one? Or is Ring that magazine, just, yeah. Is that just for like... But I think, I think you get that if you're like unified. Like you get that if you're unified, I, I think, yeah. I think so. You know, like Tyson. Fiori's when he, when got he, it, Annie. Yeah, when yeah, he beat Fiori's Klitschko. Fiori's got it. He um, obviously got the Ring magazine. Obviously no one's beat him since. No one's no unified champ no. apart from him. He's the main he's man. He's beaten in a year. Yeah. Only one draw and that was with uh, your man, wasn't it? What, wow. was, what wasn't a draw? No. That was never a draw. Without being biased, I reckon yeah. it was. No, that was a own eight, time decision. Eight, that, eight rounds to four with yeah, the knockdown. With the knockdown. Yeah. That, he, he schooled him every yeah. round, in my opinion. Literally schooled him, lad. Yeah. Coming off, you know, hell. Two and a half year comeback. Yeah. Hell. Fat as a Shows pain. what a man he is, lad. Like, I've never met him personally, you know what I mean? So I can't really. He's just like us. That's what I mean. He's just like us. Like, he is cool loves as his a food. cucumber, lad. Lo- loves his food. It was funny. I was on FaceTime to him the other week. was yeah, in Zanetti's yeah, yeah. restaurants in Leeds and he. Uh, what did he say? He said, he said something to him, like two legends or, something, or two kings. And he went, there's only one gypsy king. And yeah, I was like, yeah, that, yeah. yes, I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lad, he's sick, you know. He's mad, isn't he? He's, he's mad. hilarious, yeah, lad. he is, he is. Like I, when he grabs that mic and starts singing after fights, lad, I love it, you know. It's unreal, isn't he's it? He's just, unreal. he's a, out he's unique. He's unique and he is. The yeah, thing. he is. I don't think there'll be another. Well, there won't be. There won't be. There won't be, be another Tyson Fury ever again, be. lad. No, definitely not. And personally, I think he beats every other heavyweight what's come before him. Yeah, the size. The size? Six foot nine, twenty stone. And he moves like a fucking welterweight. You know yeah. what I mean? No one's Yeah. No 100%. one's no one's beating him, lad. No. Like the only yeah. person I think like in the past who could have would be Tyson, just off catching him. You're catching him. That's 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 the thing you gotta be you gotta catch him. Yeah. It? But the thing but look, is, wild the thing is exactly the thing is Had he got up like the Undertaker. He was unconscious <laughs> let's be fair, he was unconscious, wasn't he? For up them until like them six, seven, seven, eight, eight seconds, yeah. Then he just Opened his eyes and got up like the Undertaker. It was like WrestleMania when the Undertaker back, he come gets back to wobble, drop. Wobble, yeah. Wilder in that round, and then in that round dominated that round. <laughs> it's crazy, lad. Yeah. Like, and how big he went, lad. It's just, it's scary, lad. How big he went, he, and then he just got it off. I, I know, I, I don't think I'd be able to get all that weight off. I think I he, that weight he was off. Eight, eight stone or nine stone or something. Yeah. It was. He got. I remember him coming in the Hatton Gym because that's where he first out his comeback up in Manchester. He walked walked through the gym door. He was sparring Lucas Brown. Lucas Brown's like a former. World, world he's champion. done with the big tattoo big Australian, Australian, big yeah, Australian yeah. fella well he just knocked a kid out uh, a couple of weeks ago you know unbeaten kid no tell I kid like 22 and 1 really good fella knocked him out in the first round <laughs> and he come in to spar Tyson Tyson walked, in the, <laughs> walked into the gym 24, 25 stone and he was warming up and he was telling me he said I'm going to lose this weight Nathan. he said I'm going to come back and regain all the belts and obviously you think yeah of course like in my own mind I think he got 6, 7 stone man to lose you know, that's, yeah. that's a that's, that's a a task and a half, isn't it? Yeah, just in itself just without fighting. Without fighting. Yeah. Like, I, I get up, to, like, the heaviest I got to last time was 93 key. That's what I'm saying. Then, like, I had to lose, like, three stone from there. So and I'm thinking in my head. Seven, eight stone. You know what I mean? And he's got to lose seven or eight. That's more than double. He went from eating, like, five or six Big Macs <laughs> to literally keto diet where you eat nothing. He just flipped the switch. Yeah. And he, I remember, like, he was warming up for Lucas Brown. They'd done six rounds and Lucas Brown jumped in and he absolutely smashed him to bits. Lucas Brown couldn't, couldn't even touch him. Like Tyson was like with his hands down in front of him, spinning around it and with like a backhand, like doing spinning back fists. And he's like, you know, generally like taking the piss out. Bear in mind, Lucas Brown, he was a really good fighter, yeah. former world champion. And he literally just bombarded him, man. He took the piss out of him, really. And he was active at the time, and Tyson was like six, seven stone heavier exactly. than what he should have been. He had a pair of odd gloves on him and just softened out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mad. It just shows though people who were born to do it. Yeah, you know that's I mean? the thing is, he's. That's Born the way he is. He's, it, not, he's not. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. That's the thing with him. So after you won that first like central area title, did yeah. that like make things explode a bit? Or yeah, yeah. Well, once you win that, you're in line for an English title. Yeah. And I had some complications with that. Oh man, I was meant to a box for the English title maybe three, maybe four times. I had one opponent, then he pulled out. Then I had this other opponent, then that one pulled out. Then the opponent I was meant to fight, he ended up get. He, he, for some reason, he took a warm up fight. I was meant to fight him in eight weeks, and he took a warm up fight in eight weeks, and he ended up getting beat. So the English title, the English, the English title, got fucking took away took, from the took fight. Away from the fight. 
Um, I ended up fighting the fella and beating him. So if if he'd have been sensible and not fight me, I'd have been English champion as well. But obviously, I think things happen for a reason. I wasn't meant yeah. to be an English champion. Um, where else do we go then? Then I fought. I signed with BT and Frank Warren in two thousand and seventeen. I think it was. Yeah, makes a difference having like a machine behind you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I never got on telly until the ninth fight. Um, so it's probably late for a heavyweight, isn't courses, it? Courses, courses. Um, but obviously, I had, I wasn't coming off like Olympic bronze medalist or silver yeah. medalist, so I had to do. I knew that, but I had to do like which I'm all for because I know now the backbone of boxing, like the small or shows, yeah. selling tickets and all that thing. Yeah, you've got to, lad, I know that one. When you we know first few you pro know fights. I mean? You know it is, man. You've, you've got, got to sell, sell, you sell tickets. tickets. You've got to sell tickets. So I learned all that. And now when when you do like top a show and you got the telly around you, it makes you appreciate, I think, where you come from, where, you, where you've been, you know, on the small old shows. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Really, really hard. It's grassroots boxing, I think. Um, so I signed with BT and Frank Warren. I was with them. I'm sure it was 2017. Yeah, I think it was. It could have been 16. It was one or the other. And my first fight with them, I ended up boxing a 13 and an unbeaten German. Oh, hell, here we go. <laughs> Getting through to the wolves. Yeah, yeah. It's not exactly yeah, just not, easing me in. It's not easy, this, is it? <laughs> <laughs> ended up boxing for like a WBC international uh, belt, um, put you like in the top 15 or top 10 in the world of WBC. I ended up stopping him in the fifth round. So it was a, it was a, it was a good win. Then I had three or four fights with them, like a box like Kevin Johnson, Raz Vankajano, people what's fought for world titles, you know, good, good yeah. a bit, been at good level. A lot of experience. A lot of experience. And you need that. You need that, you know. Sometimes you got to win ugly, I think, yeah. to get that experience. You know, you, yeah, you do. People, people don't realise because they criticise you, but when you're in there with them, they do little things and you think, oh, that's never happened to me before, but yeah. it learns you. And it makes you, I think, mould you and build you into a better fighter, I think. Put you in good stead, doesn't it? Yeah, Get you exactly. ready. Get He's you like, ready oh my for, God, he yeah. can do that then. Every, obviously, other people can do that. Exactly, exactly. Then I end up boxing Daniel Dubois for the British, I think it was the British like WBO International or something, something else, like three or four belts on the line, I think. And that was in 2019. Obviously, I, I, I lost that one. But, but that was before you started doing all your S&C and before, stuff. Really. Yeah, and I had a lot of stuff going on family-wise. Yeah. Really, I sh looking back now, my dad wanted to pull me out the, the night before the fight on the Friday. You know what I mean? I had too, I had too much stuff going on family-wise, and the fight, shouldn't, the fight shouldn't have happened. Um, I've, but, I've, lad, I've got a loss like that on my record where my whole family, everyone in the gym was telling me to pull out. Yeah. But because it was in the Echo Arena, lad, and that was the main event, I was like, no, I'm not. That's what happened with me. I yeah. couldn't let, I, couldn't let I, everyone I, down. That, that, was my, that, was my, that was my thing. I, I had so many people there to support me. And I thought, I'm not going to let these people down. When really, I should have thought about myself and thought, you know what? Like you said, you could, one punch can one, one, one punch, punch had, exactly can change your life. And you're fighting a person like you know Daniel, but a big he's a big monster puncher. Yeah, can punch a wall down. Yeah, he definitely could. He's you a big I mean? machine. You know, what being, being honest, and I was I was in the wrong frame of mind walking into that ring. You got to be a hundred and ten percent when you walk into that ring or into the cage. You got to be firing all cylinders, as well as you know. Because yeah. if you got one percent missing, you're gonna get beat. It's, there's no factor about that you're getting beat. Yeah, you're spot on there. Like, you've got to go in ready 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So me being my mind elsewhere, that's what happened. My mind wasn't on the game. I knew that going into the ring. But I'd love to see you fight him again. I would. I'd love to fight him again. I really would. I'd love to see Listen, you fight him again. Listen, if you beat me fair and square, because last time I had a lot of problems, a yeah. hell, of, hell of a lot. If you beat me fair and square, I'm the type of man to say, I'll go over, shake his hand, you're a better man than me. Is what it is. Yeah. But as long as I'm 100%, yeah. I can deal with that. When I when I was on percent I can't accept that. Yeah, you know I'm, I mean? lad, I'm the same. Lad. I'm like my two losses in title fights on Cage Warriors. Lad, I didn't go into them at hundred percent, and I'm like, but you blame yourself then, yeah. You? Now looking everyone back, around me was saying, Nafe, you don't want to take the fight, Nafe. You want to you want to pull it out. Lucky you're not right. Yeah, lucky you, you're not yourself. And I was thinking, oh, I put it back to my mind. You know you are. You try and man it out, don't you? But there's no such thing. Exactly. There's no I, such thing as man it out. I'm like because of that now. I think. You might be the same as me, lad. Because of that now, I listen a lot more. A million percent, I do. I, lad, I do. I where I lost so them, much where now. I lost them fights, and I'm like, oh, just a lot of listen. You up. It does. It wakes you up. It gives big you a big time. slap around the yeah. ear, doesn't it? It's I like needed that realization. Wow, yeah. what what are you doing? People yeah. around you have got experience as well. They know what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Don't you? Like I used to think I knew the best. Yeah, but you don't. You You're can't never too old to learn. You're never too, every day is a school day. <laughs> yeah, I'm still learning things now. And my coach Lyndon and Nathan. Every day I'm going in there, I'm learning little things. You know what I mean? That's the way it should be. Yeah, it's 
the way it should be. With Paul, I'm learning everything. You know, lifting something silly, just lifting the weight correctly. I, you can feel the difference. Yeah, you can. Literally putting, moving your legs in a different position yeah, exactly. so you can feel it go all the way yeah, up the muscle mad, as you're it? doing it's mad, it. It? it. It is. Little, little things make so much benefit. So after that loss, yeah. is that what, like, obviously switch well, it on a bit more? And... Actually, the opposite. The opposite? The opposite. It done the opposite to me. I had that, I had that loss. I had hell of a lot what happened to me leading up to that leading up to that fight so obviously i think the loss for me put the top happening i got very depressed yeah. i ate the drink badly I've, I've, i don't know what i'd done that but like wasn't wasn't the drink i was I'm more food lad yeah well, i had done the both and partying <laughs> yeah i well, done the both I, mean. I i was drinking i'd say every every day virtually on and off but not drinking like like i was drinking like bottles of gin you know like yeah like the strong yeah, stuff yeah i was drinking i ballooned a lot of weight in i went up to 20 nearly tipping 26 when i got to paul i was nearly tipping 25 stone yeah you know what i mean so i ended up losing like six stone to get where i am today um and again very depressed and i thought you know boxing is for me yeah obviously the loss hurt me it cut me deep oh um, lad i, I you know say I mean? to it people, really cut me deep they, and you lose lad especially when you put so much hard work into it's you it. what loses isn't it it's yeah. not like a game of football where your team like, loses it's thank just you, you lad it's just i you. always say that lad. just you, you when and you, you get in there you're on your own one person helps you in that ring is the referee and yeah. all he can say to you is you've lost or you've won exactly that's it like in a team sport lad if you get beat 10 nil oh exactly but lad when we get in there if we get finished in 30 seconds lad it's on us it's not on yeah, anyone else next, next thing you go on social media oh you're shit oh you're shit exactly lad that's you're getting called is. all sorts that's the way it is <sighs> The world we live in now, though, I know, lad. I know, man. It's like, mad. So, yeah, I end up probably taking a break out of boxing for about four months, something like that. And I can remember I got a phone call from my coach, Nathan Clark. He went, what are you doing tonight? I went, nothing. What are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the gym. He said, why don't you pop down? And I was, I was going to make an excuse. I was going to say, oh, like, oh, I'm taking doing something. I'm taking the kids. Yeah. I, I generally was going to make an excuse. And I thought, you know what? I thought, I'm just going to go down there. Just see the lads. Yeah. See what happens. I mean, walk through the gym door. You know what lads like in the gym. I mean, I walk through the door, taking the piss out of you. All right, fatty, you know. <laughs> you know what it is. You know, they take, they take the piss out of The friendly sure. banter, yeah. but really, yeah. when you're yeah. actually fat, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm like wearing a t-shirt six yeah. times too big for me, so yeah. it hides it. Um, so I walked in the gym and I, I can remember he said, uh, what are you doing? Like I was dressed in like like gym gear anyway. He said, well, I have nothing, just come down. He went, well, oh, put your gloves on. He said, we'll do a, do, do around the back pads or something. And I could remember putting the gloves on and I can remember like all the lads around me and I thought, you know what, what am I doing? Why do I want to chuck this away? Yeah. I was instantly happy. I, going up there, I was, you know, really upset with me, or upset with myself, depressed or everything. I mean, I walked into the gym, I was happy. It just flicks a switch, doesn't it? Training, it's unbelievable for your mind. And I can remember going on the pad, I'd done one round and I was absolutely bollocks. <laughs> I mean, I was virtually being sick in the corner. <laughs> one, one round, I was bollocks, I was gone. <laughs> And I thought, you know what? I said, I'll be here tomorrow, same time. And previous, prior to this, I was like, I was being trained with Ricky Atten. And I thought, you know what? I need to be close to home. Yeah. This is where I'm at my happiest. Because you can, if you do something you love, it's not a job then, is it? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I fell back in love with boxing. And from there, then I end up ch changing my full training team, end up going from Ricky Atten to Linda Newborn, Nathan Clark, got with Paul. Yeah. I can remember Nathan introduced me to Paul Reed. It was just after COVID. So say about June or July, 2020. Yeah. Walked to the gym. He said, first thing, jump on the scale, see what you are. I was about 25 stone, 26 stone, something like that. So he said, what weight do you want to box at? I said, 19 stone. He went, fuck me. He went, I've got something to work with there. And I said, he said, don't worry. He said, I'll do it. And I had my first fight. Um, obviously worked with Paul, chucked me on the deadlift. I think I'd done about 70 kilo. And I was like, <laughs> Like I was lifting a car. Like you're shitting yourself. Yeah, I, like I was lifting a car. I literally went, fuck me, he said. He said, for such a big lad, he said, no disrespects. You yeah. Need, you need to lift your body weight plus more. You know, you're probably you, doing about 200 kilos. 200 now. kilo now, That's yeah. what I mean. He's on like 200 that, kilo. I, I'm, I'm, I'm making like work of that. I'll probably get 220s now, 230, you know what I mean? So... I think I was thinking, how am I going to lift it? He was telling me, he said, you will lift it. He said, trust me. He said, it won't be now. He said, it's building. He said, it's building. He said, next year, maybe two years. I was thinking, fuck me, how am I going to lift this? Lift this? <laughs> I thought, in my own brain, it's never going to happen. But true to his word, I did. And then I had my comeback fight. I thought, like, usually for a comeback fight, you pick someone easy, don't you? Yeah. Well, they offered me this, this Ghanaian, Richard, Richard Larty, but he's he's a type of fighter. He just comes out throwing it's big bombs. Yeah. And, 
when I accepted the fight, everyone on social media was saying like, fucking hell, mate, fair play to you. This this could be a 50-50 fight from you. Obviously, you know, from the last fight, you lost and stuff. You know, this ain't no confidence builder. Yeah. You're but getting I, right back in yeah, there. Yeah, you, you're getting right back in there in the mix. And then the boxed him. I was like, I was, I, I had like a year, no more, a year and a half, two year out the ring. So I ended up losing like four or five stone to box him. I was still a bit overweight going in the ring. I was weighing in like 20 stone. Yeah. But, I was fit. I always thought, as long as I'm fit, I don't care. Yeah. And I ended up beating him. I beat him on points, 10 round decision. I just, just everything behind me jab. Then I had another fight in March. I stopped him in there, but obviously I got continued with Paul with my strength conditioning. You know, it's, when yeah. you get back to back camps, you get fitter and stronger. Like he do, you? As you say, he doesn't lie, does he? He no, says, no, no. listen, it's going to take a while, yeah, yeah. but you I mean, will yeah, be strong. Yeah, he said, as long as, you're, as long as you persevere and dedication and, you know, consistency, you, you'll, you'll get yeah. there. And I'd done that and I got to, um, it was March. It was behind closed doors. I wouldn't know you with them fights, lad. Man, you could hear a pin drop. Literally. Like I, I was getting warmed up, this is the truth. They had a, they had like a big long curtains like that. And each one was like six by four, each apartment. And you could hear your opponent. My, each, my opponent was next door to me. And that, it was like that behind, in between us. You know, like, like Exactly like that, in yeah. between us. Like all curtains like that. And every one of us was getting warmed up and I, I'm the type of person when I'm warming up I need about 20 pisses so you have to walk past them constantly so 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 I had to literally wait there for this person to come out like he's all in his COVID gear he'd walk me to the toilet even open the door for me he'd stand there like I don't know why but he, he, he'd stand there while I have me piss and he back to the thing and literally I must have had pissed about 15 times so that's the way I, I don't know what it is I think it's all the water and when yeah. you warm up and the adrenaline I think it's, it just comes, it comes out doesn't it um, yeah, you can hear a pin drop, can you? Like, I can hear the commentators. I, I, you've just sucked the words out. The commentators. Mouth, lad. The lad threw a big shot and it missed me. Like, hit me in the chest. And he went, "Oh, what a big shot from Larty!" And, and I you're thought, in your head. And I thought, "Fuck me, did he hit me then? Like, <laughs> was that a big shot?" In my own brain, I was thinking, "No, nah, it didn't. Surely it didn't. It's unreal, isn't it?" I know what you mean, there, lad. Because like I always mentioned for me last fight, lad. I mean, my first fight in the UFC. It was behind closed doors. Lad, I could hear every word the commentators Madden, were saying. Madden, like, Madden. And I give him, to be honest, I would have pushed me on because with about two minutes left in the round, I heard DC go, oh, he's, he's losing this fight though, something like that. And I just thought, am I? Yeah, yeah, am I? And I just ran at him and started yeah. swinging dicks. Yeah, finished him. <laughs> finished him. Just thought, what? Who's losing, lad? You know what I mean? It's certainly not me. Yeah, it's right, <laughs> isn't it? It's right. <laughs> that is the only good thing with that four though. Like you can you can hear things. Like yeah, you yeah. can hear every least, instruction you're yeah, going to give you. From the corner, you. yeah. Every little detail. But I'd rather, I'd rather have a packed out house. Man. It yeah. makes it better every time. It makes it, it unbelievable. Yeah, every time. It's a lot, it gives you yeah. more buzz, I think. So, was that like, that last one wasn't the first one back with a crowd for you, was it? Yeah, for me Was, it was that yeah. the first one back yeah, with a crowd with you? Crowd, yeah. So how many Just did go. you have behind closed doors then? Two. Two? Uh, two behind closed doors, I did, yeah. My, yeah my I had, comeback fight and... I know, I had three, like, the first one I had was literally when the world got shut down, weren't it? Mine and all. 20th literally. of March, 2020. I, sw I swear to God, there was security outside my bedroom door, the hotel door. I swear. Just standing there making Stand, sure standing you didn't there, go no, out. So no one could go out. It's it was mad back then, like like unreal. We was meant to fight in London, and the UFC was meant to be on. Yeah, and because of COVID, they just shut the O2 Arena down. That's what I'm saying, man. So the O2, the UFC got cancelled, yeah. fully cancelled. Yeah, yeah, One of the UFC possible. fights ended up on the Cage Warriors bill because that was the only thing what was happening. Cage Warriors, like it was the twentieth of March. That because that was the last night the boozers were open because all my mates were in the yeah, local yeah, boozer yeah, by ours yeah, watching it. Yeah. And then like I think we were lucky they let us stay there till like two in the morning. You know what Fuck I mean? Yeah, we're everywhere yeah. at a shut at a certain time. Yeah, yeah. And then I was gutted, no why. I couldn't go and get all the scans I wanted. Restaurants closed, I know. All the restaurants closed, lad. Even the chippies closed. Everything's bad. Even Mackey's closed. Like I had to go and get a Mackey's on the Tuesday and I ordered like a forty five quid Mackey's. Because I, I just that. wanted everything on the yeah, menu. I, yeah, I done that, you know. You know when I knew the the McDonald's was shut. That's exactly what I did. I, I queued up, no jokes. I must have an hour <laughs> that, and a half. An, an hour and a half. I must have queued by four. I'm I'm persevering with this. I'm yeah. sitting here. I'm getting my Big Mac. <laughs> that, that, day, that, that day, imagine how much money that then McDonald's earned because they were like, we're shutting into in, in twenty four hours. And millions and millions well, and millions. The drive through queue had about four hundred cars in. I know, yeah. Like it was like being in the cream, lad. Yeah. When you were in there, there a nation an like that, because yeah. everyone's in the yeah. queue wanting yeah. to get the scan. Yeah, an hour and a half. I was there for. Hour and a half. It was worth it, though. Oh, but yeah, oh, hey, it was I knew worth I was going to get another one. Like yeah. for 
was it? Three months. That's what I did, lad. I got like two burgers, large meals. I got selects, nuggets, all mozzarella yeah. dippers, lad. Yeah. I just went in. Yeah. Couldn't help it. Yeah. But yeah, obviously, lad, we need to talk about your last fight yeah. because that's the lad. By far the best you've ever looked, I think, personally. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, definitely. You'd absolutely schooled them yeah, in yeah, a big yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, so me, me last one was behind closed doors match. Then I ended up signing a new deal with the Sowland Brothers Wasserman, Channel 5. Channel 5, obviously, terrestrial TV. Millions of people yeah. tune in to watch you. End up topping the bill in Liverpool. Believe it or not, never boxed in Liverpool in my old career don't lie i swear to god Never first time and the unreal. first time you main event yeah, yeah. it was unreal yeah it was unreal quality that even the like the people uh, everything was just unreal in it yeah it what is a, like that yeah. i love i used to love fighting in the echo arena yeah, because yeah. the fight fans as well in liverpool they love proper it. fight fans yeah, who love a hardcore, fight whether hardcore. it's mma boxing muay thai whatever, they love, whatever they love watching a yeah, fight 100 yeah. percent. so obviously i top the bill there fought for the ibf international um the opponent, to be fair, he was had 20, won 18, lost two, but knocked 13 out. Champion of his own country. So he's a decent yeah. fella. I just jumped on him because I knew, like, round one, like, before the bell rings, you know, he's like, when you're you, looking you, at you know, him, you're looking over you're at him like yeah, that. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to yeah. do a business on you. And the first bell rang, I just jumped on through big hooks. And I thought, yeah, I'm just going to flatten you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to flatten you now. <laughs> Love it, you yeah. know. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, got the victory. Was buzzing, man. I got back, to, got, got back to the change room. I was there two, three hours. And I was looking at me watching it. Please, I just want to just go to McDonald's. That, that, so, jump that, in the car room. <laughs> McDonald's near me, about three, three, three miles, two and a half mile. Pulled in, big order. <laughs> <laughs> see that is the only annoying thing about being last on the bill isn't it oh, the only thing still open hours. is McDonald's is McDonald's yeah. once you come out people think people always say to me oh what's the first grand you get and I go yeah, McDonald's. generally it's a McDonald's because it's the only open. thing open no, even open. KFC and Bacon yeah, they, close. they should be 24 hour yeah, really. I should. think five guys should be 24 hour I, lad, I, I think you, five guys is a bit overrated you're like that five guys you? Like, I, I, I do like it I yeah. do but when well, you're in America, lad, and you taste some of them burgers yeah, over there, it's over just there, a different kettle, different. lad. That foot, lad, it's on me vlogs, lad. That four by four from In and Out. Insane. Lad, four patties, four slices of cheese. You'd love it, brother. Okay, Let me tell you, you would love it. Lad, <laughs> that In and Out burger. How long have you got to your fight? Three and a half weeks. That's a long time. It, it doesn't is. Seem a long time, it doesn't seem long, long but it's that's long. long. Yeah. <laughs> but like the only good thing about it is like three weeks is like the diet. As as you know, the last week's like the water. Yeah, well, yeah, you don't even know yeah, what water no, is yet. Yeah. I'm it, saying yeah. you'll know what it is. Yeah. 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 Every week's don't know what yeah. a water cut is. But yeah, like the last week's like just water loading, and yeah, you yeah. don't really you don't really worry. It's just like you get it's when you start getting in the baths. That's when you've got to that's start. When you, that's when it, that's when it's yeah yeah. But like I always say, lad, weighing in is what we get paid for. Yeah, I get making paid to weigh in. I weights, enjoy yeah. getting in a cage and punching people in the face and getting punched What's in the your face. Job, that's what you train for. Exactly, that's what I train for. I don't train to get in a bath and sweat five, six, seven, eight no, kilo. You know what I mean? No, it's no, just something no. I've got to do to fight. Yeah, exactly. People always say to me, well, if I, "Do you get afraid?" It's like, the thing is, there's people out there who fly airplanes and things exactly. like that. It's my job. I'd have got, my cousin. Like, I only got back in touch with him a couple of days, like two years ago. Had he's like sponsored by Red Bull and jumps out of planes and does all mad shit and like with man. parachutes and that. And I'm like, no way. He wants to me to go and do it with him when I go and do it with him in the summer. Are you gonna do it? Yeah, therefore I'll be sick. I would do it, but I think there's a weight. <laughs> I think there's a weight. This, there right? Is. This. And I think I'm, I'm about the equation on that one. If, I was gonna say, you've never done a skydive. <laughs> I've I've always wanted to do it. You, but, yeah, but, you wouldn't be able to do it tandem, would you? Because of the weight. Because the weight. Because one of the lads in it's our like gym, Conrad, ten kilos. Yeah, one of the kilo. lads in our gym, Conrad, he had to. He had to, he went on like an eight week diet. Just to skydive. Just to skydive. Yeah, fuck that. I think he done like a little four kilo water cut or something as well, to be honest, lad. No, just to make sure he got to it. Because he's not a small dude, Conrad. He's a big dude, you know what I mean? Lad, yeah, Walks yeah. around about 120, 130, something like that. Yeah, he's a big mean? lad. He's a big lad. He's a big but lad. But he's a black belt and that as well. And he just thought, I've always wanted to skydive and he'd done it. I've done three skydives, me. Have you? I bet it's unreal. Lad, the boss. Yeah. The one in San Diego was well better than the other two. I've done two yeah. in Blackpool. Big difference. <laughs> Big difference, bit of, a, bit of a difference. Blackpool there, and San to Diego. To be fair, I had two nights in Blackpool last this week. Last week, It's great, Blackpool. Like, <laughs> right. But the view coming down is not unlike the view coming Definitely down in San Diego. I know it's one I'd prefer. <laughs> Definitely. But um, 
as I say, the f- them first two are for charity. The one in San Diego, I've just done it. Done it for second Cause, year, yeah, because yeah, I wanted yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah. But of course, I've done three now. That goes towards my qualification of being able to do it on my own. Is it? Yeah, you've got to do at least three tandem that dives before you do it on your own. So literally pulling the thing and everything by yourself. Yeah. So I might, I might have a go. But saying no, my look like that, I can end up. Yeah, end up like, yeah, parachute, parachute wouldn't, wouldn't work, lad. No, me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'd yeah. end up falling, plummeting yeah. to me death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not for me, that. <laughs> so, lad, just before we wrap up, I yeah. I know you've just fought recently. Have you got anything lined up? Yeah, I think uh, hopefully 10 weeks' time, something like you know, 10 sept- weeks, yeah. September time, I'm looking to be out. We think in Liverpool yeah. again, or? If it is, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Ideal, nice that is. Yeah, unreal. I think I'll be back in September as well from the States, lads. So we'll be able to get to that oh, one. Oh, we'll definitely. We'll yeah. have a burger together after you know, that. Oh, yeah. lad, major burgers, more definitely. than one. 100%. Yeah. 100%. That's the only, that's as I said before, about five guys, lad. Can you even ask five guys to put four patties on a burger? No, you can't, can you? Probably cost you about 600 quid Pr- in five guys. House, that. Yeah. Yeah, I have to remortgage your house if you want to get four yeah, parties that's, on that's a burger. It's the only killer, isn't it? It's the only killer. Yeah, like it's a nice burger, don't get me wrong, but it's like 12 quid for a cheeseburger. Uh, You're like, what? Yeah. Probably yeah. cost you about 78p to get to all the ingredients, <laughs> if that. And they're charging right, you that much. It's right, though, isn't it? Oh, 100%. Capitalism, man. It kills us. <laughs> but it's great at the same time. But uh, yeah, lad, just uh, before we wrap it up, lad, I always say, to, like, give a shout out to your sponsors, lad. Uh, tell everyone your Instagram, your Twitter, all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, everyone follow me at Nathan Gorman96 on Insta, Twitter, Gorman Boxing. Big shout out to all my sponsors, RDX Mawson, Whitby Morrison, uh, Ozfit. You know, everyone, you know, everyone that supports me as well. Big love, guys. Big love from the big man. Thank you very much for coming on, Nathan. I appreciate that. That's a wrap for another week. See you next week, the firm.